Um, <laughs> all right, let's get into some AEW talk, and then uh, and guys, keep keep the chat going. I'm gonna try to get to you guys some more. Um, so AEW decided to go ahead and upgrade their creative room by signing coveted creative writer R.D. Evans off the TNA scrap heap. Uh, <laughs> what what is so one of the what what is probably the most famous angle going right now that R.D. Evans probably has a hand in? What do you think? Then uh, that he could bring over to AEW. You mean what's his most famous angle in TNA? Well, the one that he's working on recently, Ash by Elegance. So, so you're saying Artie Evans is in charge, was writing the Ash by Elegance program, and that's who Tony Khan decided to hire. Yes, yes, sir. I, I'm <laughs> going to get into more on my podcast about the Ash by. I'll get into more about that. Yeah, um, yeah. S- save that gold for your show. Yeah, but yeah, that's um. Again, remember what I said? Like they got rid of people. I, I mean, Artie Evans said he left on his own, right? But the exodus was people who weren't good at their job. Yeah. As blunt as I can fucking put it. So um, that's who Tony Khan wants to bring. Last time someone Tony Khan brought someone who wasn't good in TNA, it was Jimmy Jacobs. And you could immediately feel it on AEW television. BQ, like the they're, they're doing the learning tree. Like literally, <laughs> and the an exact carbon copy program that Jimmy Jacobs wrote on TNA, the Learning Tree, headed by Brian Myers, and he had his little gang of goofballs with him doing bad comedy. And I'll, I'll be honest, I kind of thought the Learning Tree had some funny moments. To be to be quite honest, the the Brian Myers version. Yeah. But now I, he's got I, Chris Jericho doing that same exact character character, but this time with Big Bill, and now he's brought in Brian Keith and. I get the feeling Sammy Guevara is going to be in on it too. And it's crap. It's the worst work of Jericho's career. Um, I talked to VSK and they really liked the learning tree stuff. And he goes, we just showed up to work one day and now, okay, it's over. Yeah. And now I'm wondering, yo, did that coincide with Jimmy Jacobs departure? That's kind of what I'm thinking in my head as a possibility. Well, you know, you know what else Jimmy Jacobs was in charge of was the Taylor Wilde tarot card gimmick and all the witchcraft. And then he brought that over, and like next thing you know, Julia Hart's doing it on AEW. And I was so happy to tell JD about that because that's why JD quit watching TNA was because of the witchcraft stuff. And then they immediately brought it over to AEW, and I thought it was brilliant just because I wanted JD to be mad about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in their defense, the Julia Hart Sky Blue stuff is presented a lot better than yeah. TNA's version of it. Well, Much b- bigger. A bigger budget and they have more people to be able to control the scene and yeah so definitely and i and i think actually at some point julia hart ended up getting herself over with that stuff yeah and, and it helps that the, you know um the fans want to fuck sky blue and julia hart <laughs> yeah yeah you know so that that helps yeah yeah d- doesn't hurt doesn't hurt yeah. um so what are you so you've been watching i know you've been you keep up with aew too what do you think about the you know them bringing on more wwe people into aew because when i started watching aew i wanted them to be the anti wwe and they still are to a certain extent like you're not going to get to see matches that like will osprey is having like these epic matches and all this other crazy stuff that he's doing and swerves doing and uh, a lot of the other guys but i was watching last night and they literally got Christopher Daniels out there cosplaying as uh, as Adam Pierce. Uh, yeah. Like he's doing the same exact character. They went from having essentially no authority figures to having right now they have they have four. And I think when Kenny Omega comes back, they're they're gonna have five authority figures on the show. Um, and it's <laughs> and they, they're they're crossing over, right? And they're doing a lot of the same stuff and they're doing some bad comedy. It's like what like what are we doing here, AEW? You guys used to be the cool the cool show. And I, I was, I was actually listening to Meltzer earlier today and he was talking about the beginning of nitro and how it would come from like, you know, nightclubs or it would be at like college, like college campuses and stuff like that. And like, that was the cool place to be when AEW first came online. That's what AEW was. It was like, you would look into the, you'd watch the show and every single week was a party. And now it's just them cosplaying WWE. Yeah. Um, I saw orange Cassidy today. Uh, it was like, he put out a quote, like we want AEW to be, to be cool again and i'm like but wrestling number one is not cool it's very difficult to make wrestling cool uh 
you can't just manufacture it. Sometimes it happens organically yeah. uh, with the Stone Colds, the Rocks of the World, and, and really the early AEW days. Um, but then every time Tony Khan, who's a very uncool person, gets on screen, um, that drags down your your product. You know, the more the more um, the more nerds and more dor- dorks you put on screen, like the, the, the less <laughs> cool it's going to be. Um, and it it is a it is a bad version of WWE right now. Um, like you see, I've got my Dark Order shirt. I was I I think you didn't like them, but oh, I was no, the I did bi- not. <laughs> biggest fucking fan <laughs> well, of them, dude. Well, I, I, to- no, I have to I have to correct myself. I was not a fan of the way they were presented at first with their first inclusion. But when they were right. on, they were doing some of their skits with Brody Lee slapping stuff out of people's hands. I thought that was really funny, and I was a big fan of Brody Lee. Yeah, w- once they once they built the the stable and like so they had something very interesting in their stable where they're a heel stable. Colt Cabana is a part of their stable. He's a white meat baby face. But but they made it work. Like they they would do six uh Preston Vance, Allen Angels and um Colt Cabana were six man a uh, trios whatever. Two were heels, one is a baby face, but they found a way to make it work and it wasn't it wasn't bad. You know, like that just shows when you got some focus creative that you can do some stuff different. Um, but now it's yeah, it's very much a carbon copy of what they see in WWE. If I wanted to see these people in, from WWE, dude, I would watch that show. Yeah, like, and I've never been big on let's load the talent the, the roster with old wrestlers. Like TNA has done that with with the RVDs and the Dreamers, and I have fucking Ken Shamrock sign of the company for a year with <laughs> yeah. liver spots and no tan <laughs> you know like i don't i i don't know what their target fan base is when you do that when you bring in yeah. guys in your 50s you know yeah uh we got some wwe notes and then we're gonna uh we're gonna send it home because j or because i almost said jd because bq and i are gonna go over to the impact lounge channel we're gonna do a q and a over there um and uh, we're so thankful that BQ was able to make some time for us uh, today. Uh, man, Ricochet left the WWE. I mean, he's going to he's going to AEW, right? Like, there's no there's no doubt about it at this point. Yeah, dude, I've I've seen the TNA. I saw a TNA post, not TNA, but TNA fans says, "Why not us?" You know, I'm like, <laughs> he's not coming here. So Ricochet yeah. didn't. He flat out said on Twitter that he wasn't going to TNA when he was a free agent the first time. Yeah, he never he never had it. He watched. TNA because he said he had friends there. He had never had interest in signing there. He's definitely not going to now. Um, but the problem is on WWE television, there's no one like Ricochet. AEW, there's a lot of Ricochets over there. I know he has his own skill set, but so does Ray Phoenix. And does Ray Phoenix stand out from fucking? I'm trying to think of another just random high flyer that does some flips. I mean, I so with with Ricochet. Um, he, he could have stood out more in WWE, but I just never really felt like they got behind him. Like they got yeah. behind him a little bit in NXT when, but when he got onto the main roster, I just don't feel, I just never felt like they ever believed in him as a character and believed him in as a, as a guy that really could be at the top. And I fully believe in him. And I think we, you know, when he gets over to AEW and everybody's like, ah, he's just going to be going from one mid card company to another mid card company. But yeah, but at least in AEW, he'll get to do his shit. And, and that's what I want to see. I want to see him do his shit. I get to see Phoenix do his shit. Now, is, he, is Phoenix ever going to be the world champion? Of course not. But at least I get to see him like be awesome. Right? His opponent and, and gets I don't hurt. Care if he's second right. match or last match, he gets to be awesome. Yeah, I said if Phoenix's opponent gets hurt in the match, he might. When, when he got the uh, title from Moxley. Yeah. When he got... <laughs> no, yeah. I understand what you're saying about Ricochet, but, uh, but just to play like devil's advocate, WWE is rarely wrong about somebody. Oh you know, man, they were wrong about Swerve, brother. I mean, like I've seen them wrong be wrong about, it. and they were they were wrong about Drew McIntyre too. They fired his ass, and he he made a name for himself. They're wrong about Cody Rhodes. Yeah, I, but, I, I they, they but then they're not always wrong. They were they were right about Aleister Black and Keith Lee and some of these other cats. I don't. I think they're. I just personally, because I watched him for a long time before he went to WWE. I think they're wrong about Ricochet. I'm gonna put myself out there and say that. Now a year from now, I could be, you know, come on this show and be like, okay, I was, I was, I was wrong, but I think they're wrong about Ricochet. Like I see someone here says wrong about Tony Storm. I, I would agree with that. Um, yeah, I'm not saying they're always wrong, but they're they're usually right. 
you know, it, it took Drew. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But Drew ultimately had to come back to W. There's few, though, who, who became stars leaving WWE. Like, Drew got himself over. Cody got himself. Oh, well, Cody probably. But Drew had to come back to be a star. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see a year from yeah, now. We'll, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see a year from now. If, if yeah. a year from now, like he hasn't really had any meaningful matches, which I think like right away, they're probably going to burn through a bunch. Like, like within the first couple of months, he's going to wrestle Osprey and he'll wrestle Pac and or Pac, whatever you want to call him. And yeah. he'll, he'll wrestle Danielson before Danielson retires. But if like a year from now, he is like, like on the pre-show in a trios match. He'll be like, okay, yeah, maybe I, I got that one wrong. But to support your theory in Lucha Underground, he wrestled with a lot of those guys, and he was he was the dude there. As he, he was the the tippy top guy in Lucha Underground. He was right. awesome as Prince Puma. Yeah, Prince Puma freaking ruled. And there um, was the Phoenix and Pentagon and Swerve and all yeah. these dudes there, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that crew. Um, which makes sense why I've always been a big supporter of Swerve because he was uh, he was on Lucha Underground. All right. Yeah, um, la- lastly, uh, I had some other notes, but we have already gone over time because we uh, we I I did tell BQ we'd only go an hour. Because <laughs> because uh, we got to get to another podcast right after this, but uh, uh, Hikaleo from New Japan, he is uh, going to be joining. It looks like he'll be joining his brothers Tamatanga Tongaloa in the Bloodline coming up here pretty soon. Looks like they're going to call him Tala Tonga, well, Tonga yeah, Tala, yeah. the tall one <laughs> of the Tongas, is going to be Tala Tonga in WWE. I think his real name is Tala, but T A U L A or something like that. Yeah. But they're spelling it T A L L A. L L A, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see where he falls into the equation because right now you've got the three on screen. You can eventually put him versus the three, the Usos and Roman. But now you keep throwing new people in there. Well, well you, we, you know well, where the fuck is coming from? MLW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be it's going to be Solo and the Tongans, right? Because Hikaleo will be with Solo and his brothers. And well, it's solo in Tama Tonga Tonga Loa. And then yeah. when Roman comes back, he'll have the, the Usos and he'll have Jacob Fatu from MLW. Right, right, right. And so then it'll be four on four. And that's like probably your war games match later this year. The, the NWA just de- debuted the, debuted the uh, Savage Samoans. And they're from the same, like the son of Sika, like they always are. Yeah. These motherfuckers suck. So th- there's no like, <laughs> I was so disappointed when they, when they wrestled. I like, I was really looking forward to it. Let's see. It's a really tall guy. Kind of like, um, uh, who were you just talking about? Uh, Hikaleo. It's not that tall, but he's a tall dude. And then you got a shorter fat guy. That's a, more of a, like fall type dude. They're, they've taken him off his feet. The first match. That's uh, funny. Doing comedy. I was like, Oh my God, you guys just fucked them up in one match. Yeah. Uh, oh, hold on. I got uh, got Dan Goucher on. Uh, he said, AEW better lean into an ambulance match with Ricochet. So my what I the idea that I saw for Ricochet online, because he got taken out in an ambulance on Raw, him and Samantha Irvin, I think yeah. that he should debut like in the back of an ambulance or like driving an ambulance to the arena on Dynamite. Like, I thought he should have done it this week. I don't know if he's a free agent yet or not. I thought he was free, but like that's how he needs to debut on the show is in an ambulance. I actually agree with that 100%. Yeah, but all right, guys. Hey, thanks everybody in the chat, uh, Mr. Majestic Io. Uh, yeah, Io. I don't think I got to you earlier. Io. Yeah, Jacob Fatu on Roman side. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, head over to patreoncom slash the Mike and JD Show. Become a Patreon subscriber today. This weekend uh, for on Brace for Impact, I'll be recapping tonight's episode, and I'll be doing Against All Odds recap. Uh, that's because Against All Odds is tomorrow night, Friday night, and from Chicago. So I'll be recapping both shows, and then I'll talk about whatever new news is out. Um, be sure to check out the Impact Lounge Negative BQ. Look that up on uh, on YouTube because uh, he and I are about to go and do a Q and A. But also on his Impact review later this weekend, he is actually going to get into even more depth and more detail about what he elaborated on tonight with us with the future of TNA under the an- uh, the Anthem umbrella. So thank you everybody for being here. I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, mahalo. Uh, 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 competition starting to get thick is the click, so I hope you watch your A game, amen, no way, from the track when we unite and spit, this isn't A game, better bring your A game, competition starting to get thick is the click, so I hope you watch your A game, amen, no way, from the track when we